everyone this is Denise and today I thought I would show you um, just some little previews of my fourth book workshop that just came out and this one's called fabric snippet rolls and clusters enhancing your art journal covers so this um, workshop kind of builds on the other three workshops the artisanal journals layered legacies and scrap to treasures um, and they're all four on Skillshare um, so if you're a Skillshare member go check those out definitely and they are all four on my website if you don't uh, if you're not a member of Skillshare and you just want to buy individual classes so in this workshop we start off with going through our fabric stashes and if you don't have a fabric stash and you don't want to go buy tons of fabric from the fabric store I do have a couple of resources um, that I've shared for pretty ribbons and for um, curated bundles of fabric that are good for junk journaling, slow stitching, um, they're coordinated in colorways and they just come um, with a large variety of small bits of fabrics and pieces and snippets and lace and some have velvet and crinkled fabrics and um, this resource I actually shared in the art hall this month um, 1924 linens and more I think is the name of it um, and these are curated vintage linens that are um, possibly hand dyed and put into a collection that's kind of amazing for having your own little fabric stash and not having to buy like whole quarter yards or half yards of fabric maybe not having the space or just maybe not having the resources to find such interesting bundles of fabric and lace and pretty bits and pieces so I do have some ideas for you there if you just don't want to go to the fabric store and buy large collections of fabric <laughs> so we start off this uh, workshop making lovely snippet rolls which are basically long ribbons of collected fabrics that um, you could glue together or sew together I've chose to do a little of both I tack it down and then sew it um, and then embellish it with things that are beautiful like buttons and ribbons and lace and little snippets of ribbon and you know some of some of these get really really heavily decorated um, that when people make these I keep mine a little bit simpler because then I can have a little more options on what I'm going to use these for and I can decorate them up once I uh, have a project in mind but it's really cool to have stuff like this available to just give you ideas and to get excited about and to really use up all the bits and little pieces of fabric so when you're cutting stuff up and you've got a little tiny bit left over you don't have to trash it it can become a little part of a really lovely snippet roll and I've just put these on some antique bobbins that I've had for a long time that I used in photography um, and that's the perfect way to store these and then they can sit on my bookcase and just be lovely decoration until I'm ready to grab them and use them so I'll show you how I make these they're very easy to make um, and then out of one of those as an extra tiny little project I actually made myself a, um, a little pin holder so this is like a little mini fabric book that you can put pins in and that was super easy to make and assemble and just took a couple of minutes and um, it's so lovely and now I can store my leftover pins and needles so that was super fun and it's really lovely with a little metal closure um, so I love that I also show you how to make a few lovely little clusters um, with leftover bits I've got some ex lots of little examples and some that we make in class and then these can be little clusters and bits that we use on our uh, covers of our journals or we can put this on a card front they're really lovely for that 
And so any little leftover buttons, scraps, beads, what have you, paper, um, you can make lovely little clusters of stuff out of. So nothing goes to waste in your stashes of things that you have and use. And then this is just a little piece of fabric I put on a paper clip and then we could clip that to the top of a page. How easy and fun is that? And then in this class we're going to make um, a couple different journals. We're doing a glued journal where we glue the binding um, and papers together and then the sewed journal. So this is techniques that we have already learned in the previous workshops that we are just refreshing our memories on. And then the focus of this workshop is of course making lovely covers with interesting closures. Um, this one uses a belt loop as a closure. We've got interesting buttons that I've used on some of these, another belt loop one. So this one's more about seeing how creative and interesting that we can get on the cover of our pieces. Um, and this one is a cover that I've sewn. Um, I've got a few uh, covers that I've just glued together. So you don't have to know how to sew. It's just another element of interest on your books. Um, I've included some little pockets on the front of these. Um, some of these, you know, I try to do different front and back. And here's a snippet roll for the cover. So you can see how interesting and lovely um, that you can make these. And this one's closed with the little belt closure. Um, and then inside of the books I have used um, handmade papers and I've used nicer watercolor papers and I've used handmade papers so it's a variety of interesting pages that I've also you know included in my fabric books um, so this is just kind of diving off of what we've already kind of learned and done and add to it or you can just jump into this one and all the information on how to make these are in there also. Um, this one I've used different types of watercolor papers so they're not all the same and then some handmade papers and just lots of interesting bits and then a different fuzzy back than I did on the front so I love that. Well actually it's the same front back snippet on the edge and then pocket here on the front so that was and then this is a snippet roll up underneath there. And then this one also um, a variety of different pages with the handmade papers and a nicer watercolor paper built in to be able to uh, paint on and decorate. And so I love the variety and being able to use all these handmade papers that I've collected through the years. Yummy velvet cover, fun, different pattern on the back which we've included on the front so it all kind of coordinates but looks super cool when you look at the book itself. Um, this one I've done lovely lace bits and fabric snippet roll different fabric on the back and then huge interesting button closure and watercolor paper and handmade papers in my book. Um, and then this last one that I've got here is the glued binding. Different paper on the uh, fabric on the front and the back and these are all glued on so it's not sewed. I've done my little clusters here on the edge that we uh, made in class and then a lovely little ribbon to close around that button. And then this one is just handmade um, using watercolor paper that I can then uh, paint and these open up this one's still very tight but these open up flat where we can paint um, the different sections so just use watercolor paper in that one um, so that's really cool so this is what we're making in this new little class and so I thought we would paint in one of these and get it started because I like jumping into these and just getting them started with you guys after I kind of walk through like what we've done um, in class and so I hope you enjoy making some upgraded uh, sketchbook watercolor art journals um, 
than just plain covered ones and each book each book workshop kind of builds on itself so if you're on Skillshare um, you can check each of those out but this one really dived heavily into the covers and making them super cool and I hope you enjoy this workshop and the bits and pieces that we do in there and I can't wait to see what you guys are creating if you're in that class and so let me get some paints out and we will pick one and start painting and just see you know what we can create so I'll be right back all right so I'm working in this book because it's one of my favorite I love it it's got the layers of ribbon kind of making a great big snippet roll because you do this and then cut that into strips but I'm like oh that's a pretty cover pretty piece of lace lovely velvet ribbon closure we've got the velvet on the back we've got this other yummy fabric on the back um, that's floral and I just love this book and so I've opened it to a page with a handmade paper that's just leaves and so I thought I want to protect the handmade paper from me just randomly dropping anything on it <laughs> so I've got a, a piece of the wax paper here and I think I'm just going to tape it down to make sure that it doesn't move until I'm done and I've just this is just uh, painter's tape, that blue painter's tape. And I've just taped off a um, an edge because I wanted to have a little frame around it. And then hopefully I won't get anything on that. <laughs> we'll see. And I've just got a filbert. I've pulled out colors that I thought kind of matched that to start with and just see. So I've put out on my little paper here uh, blue, green, medium, this black matte acrylics. I thought that was greener color in there. And this dark green deep, which is not as yellowy as the handmade, but I thought I could kind of mix these and get something I liked. And so I'm going to go full on abstract here. Um, I like mixing my gesso. I've got white and clear gesso um, because it adds interest to the paint. It makes it more spreadable and it also gives me some grit in there for other things to layer on top of it like pastels or pencils or you know what have you and I'm just going for it with the white and the green and not really getting super hung up on where I've even put the color I want it to be abstract I didn't start in the middle which is um, kind of a hack that I like I like kind of coming from the edges and then I might come back here with my bowl scraper and really smooth some of that back like the brush strokes back in a little bit and just see how we can move that acrylic paint around and oh my goodness look at that <laughs> that is amazing I might even take a little bit of that gesso um, into my bowl scraper and just move some of that around for some more texture and a little bit of light spot in there just kind of working intuitively like where do I want to set this down at and not worrying about it you know your art journals are meant to be places to explore and experiment new ideas and things um, and that's kind of what I use them for and at the same time I do really like um, some of the yummy things that we end up with um, so this is a art foamy by Seth Apter um, that I just got because he ran this sale and I wanted to try them and this is called Craters SA0004 and I don't know if these are still available or not because he was doing some kind of special clear out sale but I thought hmm fun time to experiment with these I'm just going to take a brayer and get a little bit of white and just see what we can do here with that okay I love that <laughs> and then you could you know get a little bit of that paint off pretty easy with a rag and it's good to go you could also wash these um, and just get some of that paint off my brayer there um, but yeah you can take them to the sink and wash them so I like that about them 
I need a piece of paper <laughs> to really clean the brayer off real quick. There we go. That way I don't end up with paint where I didn't want it. And are we wanting to add anything else to this? I kind of feel like we could add a little Posca pen. Um, and I know if I leave that paint right there, I'll definitely stick my hand in it. So maybe we will set this to the side as I knock more stuff off. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking maybe some marks and just finishing touches. And it is vastly different than what we flanked it with, but I've tried to keep it kind of coordinated color wise so that we're at least kind of blending and you could see, you know, oh, those kind of match because of color, even if we are different in styles. And I think as flanking pages, um, they'll be very interesting. Kind of thinking, do I want some marks in here? Here's my 4B Faber Castell matte graphite and I could just kind of draw mark make like not something that's super obvious but if you got close to it you could see another layer in our piece and I like that just some maybe big scallops just something interesting as another layer when you get up and you can see some details okay I like that and kind of thinking, still want something else. What do we want? I really like those art foamies. I wonder if there's another one in there that I could just try. This one is Phillips and Flats. So this one is uh, screwdrivers. <laughs> and I could could do that with the paint still that I've got on my thing here. Maybe this bright green one. That one's very subtle, but it's just enough to give me an extra bit of color in there. Okay, I like that. All right, I think, I think I might call that finished for today because I like where this has ended up and I'm happy with the amount of color. So let's just see how we have done. I'm gonna do my brayer real quick on a scrap piece of paper so that it's just not all over the place and let's just see and then I've also because this book is I didn't want the page to be slanted I've just sat this on a, another book underneath it to give me a flat surface um, so the colors are not exact but I'm okay with that we'll just see if we like it um, doesn't ever have to be finished. We could always come back and paint over it again. If you didn't like what you painted, you could just gesso the whole page and paint it again. I think I'm going to like it though. And I've used in this sketchbook, I have used the Hanamule paper. The, the, uh, my favorite one. Let's see. I think I've got some sitting right down here. This is the pad of paper that I've used in this book. It's that Hanamule cold press watercolor paper. Um, I had several pads that I had gotten stashed that I, I buy paper when it's on sale and then when I have a project I can pull it out of my closet and not worry about how much I spent on something. <laughs> it's my little secret to not worrying about messing up nice papers is if you buy it on sale and stash it. <gasps> Look how pretty that is. Doesn't match exactly color wise, but I still think it's pretty darn cool. And as something that I'm going to, you know, paint the whole thing and then flip through the different pages, I'm definitely happy with the turnout of that page. And then we still have this one that we could decorate. How cool is that? 
Yee! Got the book started. That was very exciting. So I hope you check out the brand new book workshop and make some of these super fun journals with me. This is the fabric snippet rolls and clusters enhancing your art journal covers. And it is the fourth of my series of art journal making workshops. I got so obsessed making books that I was like, I'm not done making them. After that first workshop, the artisanal journals one. Um, and so now I've made like 20 handmade journals. Like I got enough handmade journals to last me a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be my goal to fill them all up with art. And I, it's, it, I can't even describe the feeling you get when you've made the book and then you've made the art in the book and then you flip through it because, you know, a lot of times we just paint on paper and we store it away. And people always say, what do you do with all the stuff you paint? And people are asking in the groups, what do I do with all this paper that's building up? This is the perfect solution to all of those problems. You could turn those into pages and books, or you could make a book and paint in the book, and then you have a finished book to show off and carry around and, and be proud of every time you look through it. The feeling really is indescribable. It's amazing. So I hope you come and make some books with me, and I will see you guys in class.